Hey guys, welcome to my first Skylake overclocking tutorial. First of all, I want to apologize for the bad uh, sound and image quality. My good uh, game capture card just died for no reason, so I had to use my backup one, which doesn't doesn't have the best quality, but oh well, it should still be fine for you guys to follow my steps. Uh, yeah, I'm using the Asus Maximus 8 Hero motherboard in combination with the i7 6700K CPU, and I'm using the Noctua NHD 15 CPU cooler. First of all, let's go to main and take a look on the details. You can see the i7 6700K CPU, which has a stock clock of 4 GHz. You can also see I'm using a total of 8 GB memory, means I'm using two sticks of 4 GB each. And the current memory clock is 2133 MHz. We will need the extreme trigger, so let's go there first. And ah, uh, yeah, this might also be handy for you guys. Uh, the CPU features on the right, you can see the Temperature is currently 28 degrees and the stock core voltage is around 1.264 volt. Alright, so first of all, go down to the AI overclock tuner and change this one to XMP. Select no because we want to overclock clock ourselves. You can see the XMP profile of my memory sticks is DDR4, 3200C16 and around 1.35 volt. Okay, so the B clock is already adjusted to 100, that's correct. So the next uh, thing we have to do is adjust the one core ratio limit to 45 and in combination with a B clock of 100 megahertz it will result in 4500 megahertz CPU core speed especially on all cores not only one. You can see the DRAM frequency is already adjusted correctly by the XMP profile as well. So the CPU core cache current limit will uh, limit the CPU, if you overclock it very high, it will draw some uh, more current than usual and if it's limited, you might not be able to clock high. So set this one to 255.5, which is the limit. So you're not limited by anything, that's good. And change the minimum and maximum ca uh, CPU ca uh, cache ratio to 41. So the, the cache is uh, some part of the system agent or the uncore. It kind of helps performance if you clock it high, but you also risk. In I advise to leave this one on 41. Skylake is very easy when it comes to overclocking because you only have one main voltage to adjust. It's the CPU core cache voltage. Set this one to a manual mode so we have full access to the voltage itself. And we will fix this one to 1.26 volt, which should be good for most CPUs for 4.5 gigahertz. You can see the DRAM voltage is already set to 1.35 volt by the XMP profile. And another important voltage is the CPU system agent voltage. Currently it's around 1.05 volt, which should be good for most CPUs and most memory sticks. If you want to run really, really high memory speeds, it could be that you have to increase this one. So in case you have trouble with high memory clocks, it could be that you have to increase this one to maybe 1.15 volt. Yeah, if you have questions or trouble with it, just let me know in the comments. I will help you guys out. Another cool or important thing we have to take a look on is uh, in internal CPU power, man uh, power management. The Intel Speedstep technology will cause your CPU to clock down in idle, which will save you maybe two or three watt. So in idle. So if you want to save those two or three watts, which are not really uh, important, you can leave this one enabled, but I rather have it disabled to always have the full speed of 4500 MHz. Um, one more thing is the external Digi Plus power control and change the CPU load line calibration to level 5. On some boards, the stock value is level 6, and the load line calibration will cause your CPU core voltage to increase on load. So if it's on level 6 or level 7, it will go. Uh, very high. So level 5 should be good for my experience. Okay, one more thing we can do is go to the ASUS overclocking profile and save what we just did. We can call it, yeah, well, I already have a profile with 4500 MHz, so you can just type, type it in here and save it to maybe profile 8. Yeah, and that's about it. There's nothing else you have to do for now. Uh, hit F10 and go to Windows. Okay, so we're in Windows now and you can see I also finally upgraded to Windows 10. 
And yeah, well, first you need to download those three tools. You need Prime95, CPU-Z and CoreTemp. You can also find all the important links in the description and also the download links. Okay, let's take a look at uh, CPU-Z first. This is an information tool. It will give you all the system details. For example, you can see the CPU and of course the core voltage, which is 1.264 uh, volt, which we said earlier in the BIOS. You can also see the, the clock of 4,500 megahertz. If you wanna take a look on the individual cores, just right click anywhere here and you can see the individual core speed. So you can see 4,500 on all cores. Yeah, mainboard you can see the Maximus 8 Hero motherboard. You can see I'm using 0502 BIOS version. And if you go to memory, you can see the cache or uncore clock of 4,100 MHz. You can see I'm running 8 GB of DDR4 in dual channel at a, course, uh, at a DRAM frequency of 1,600 MHz. And in, because it's DDR, which means double data rate, it's the 3,200 MHz of the memory sticks. The second tool we need is core temp. Core temp will give us all the important information on the CPU core temperatures, which we can see here. Okay, the Prime95 is a stress tool, basically, and change this one to custom. Set this one to 1344, the minimum FFT, and also the maximum FFT to 1344. Check run FFTs in place, and then give it a go. So the CPU will put full load on all the cores, and you can see the core temperature is now increasing and because I'm using a very strong cooler than HD15, the CPU is staying very, very cold, even uh, overclocked to 4,500 MHz and 1.264 volt. So basically you need to keep this test running for one hour. If you have no, no uh, errors and the temperature is staying below 85 degrees, you're totally good to go and your system is successfully clocked to 4,500 MHz. If you exceed 85 degrees here, you should go back to BIOS and lower the core voltage because then your cooling system is not sufficient enough uh, to keep the system cool. So you might have to choose lower clock of maybe 4,400 MHz and a lower core voltage. If you um, experience an error here now, let's say, after 15 minutes and you only at 65 degrees, then you can just simply go back to BIOS and increase the core voltage to let's say 1.275, 1.28 and just try again. If this works like, like totally fine, you can also go back to BIOS and increase the core speed to 4,600 and test. Well, yeah, that's about it. Um, not much you can do here with Skylake, so if you have any trouble, questions or suggestions, uh, suggestions for new videos, just let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks guys.